you use the word God, yeah. and how do you relate to that now, Ken, uh, in a post-mythic, even post-materialist way? Right. Uh, as subdue something, what's newer next in the way that we relate to God? Understand. I know. I know. It's it's a real problem because it, it it's it's really funny if you actually sit back and look at at human evolution as, as a whole over the past million years or so. Because there there was sort of the first, and we're looking at sort of pre-modern, modern, post-modern, and and coming integral. And it, it, during the pre-modern era. Virtually every culture everywhere believed in some form of supernatural spirit. God was everywhere. And it, there was just uh, virtually no culture anywhere that didn't have some sort of, of belief in a supernatural, transcendental, spiritual reality. God or goddess or elemental spirits or whatever it was, uh, God was everywhere. And, of course, it was generally magic or mythic. And then occasionally there were some state experiences into subtle and then causal and then non-dual. And you can actually track the contemplative traditions did go from subtle to causal to non-dual. But then the, just the, the general stages of growing up themselves, those early magic and mythic stages, everybody believes in some form of God. And then you get to modernity, and now nobody believes in God. God is God is from goes from everywhere to God being nowhere, and it's just flat out. You know, Nietzsche's God is dead, and of course it just means the mythic God, which had become increasingly unbelievable. And as uh, we got into the rise of the third person, rational, reason, um, orange altitude, rise of modern science, and so on, the mythic religions just became increasingly unbelievable. And, of course, state experiences weren't being brought in here very often, um, although you, you always had people, whether it's Meister Eckhart on the religious side or Giordano Bruno on the sort of more, quote, scientific side, having these state experiences, but those never really entered the conversation in a big way. So we went from a pre-modern God is everywhere to a modern God is nowhere. And now as we start to move into postmodern and then into integral, we start to move through second tier. And then as you look at the direction that development's going, it's headed towards super conscious. It's headed towards transpersonal. And now these aren't mythic beliefs now. These are actual stages of a person's own interior awareness. So it's going from, and, and every developmentalist who thought about these higher stages, all of them, whether it was Kohlberg postulating a universal mystical stage or Maslow saying, okay, we, we go from self-actualization to self-transcendence, and a radical spiritual experience. So all of a sudden, it's like God was everywhere, then God was nowhere, and now it's like God is coming back. Only it's a very different kind of God. It's not pre-rational, it's trans-rational. So it's an actual super-conscious, transpersonal stage of development that everybody will go through if they just continue growing. Now, it's unlike state experience right now because, generally speaking, the only people that have enlightenment or awakening state experiences are people that voluntarily take up a practice. So unlike, let's say, the standard stages of growing up and going from archaic to magic to mythic to rational to pluralistic to integral. Those are structures that everybody will experience that's human and it just continues to grow. Whether you want it or not, like it or not, you're going to go through magic and then you're going to go into mythic and then you're going to go into rational and then you're going to go into pluralistic and you're going to get those, come what may. 
you only get state experiences if you take up a voluntary practice and for five or ten years work real hard and get your center of gravity, state center of gravity, moved from the gross sensory motor eye of flesh world to Turia and Turiatita, to witnessing and then non-dual suchness. And so that's not what we're talking about now, though, with, with third tier, with these coming higher structures, because their stages everybody will go through, you know, voluntary, involuntary, just keep growing, and you're going to grow into these super conscious transpersonal stages. So God, in some sense, is back. And it's this weird thing. It's sort of some sort of God being everywhere to no sort of God being anywhere to some sort of God coming back. And that is headed our direction. And whether people want it or not, whether they like it or not, they're going to get it. So, unfortunately, what we need is an entirely new language for all of this. Yeah. Because all of the old language, uh, with the outside of the contemplative traditions, um, the old language is is karmically warped badly in terms of its its early magic and mythic pre-rational versions. And so it, it's, there's a whole sort of morphogenetic stream connected, a whole karmic stream, if you will, connected to those terms that just are almost inapplicable. I mean, what, what the mythic literal stages meant by God is not anything that third tier means by God. And so part of our difficulty is we need an entirely new semiotics. We need an entirely new jargon. We need an entirely new language for this field that humanity as a whole is rushing toward. And that's going to be a tough one because we, we don't have any recognized knowledge community that's dealing with those higher structures and states. And to the extent that there there is such a thing, it's more or less the contemplative, esoteric, hidden core of the world's great traditions. So aspects of Kabbalah, Hasidim, um, in Judaism, uh, Sufism, in, in Islam, the contemplative Buddhist uh, traditions, Vedanta in Hinduism, and, and so contemplative Taoism, there's the largest form of Taoism is magic Taoism, and that's not contemplative. So, so there's that small sort of handful of populations around the world that have some of that kind of experience. Um, but even even they tend to have to use the language of their exoteric uh, outer religion. So we're, we're really on uh, an extremely strange course here, which is that we're headed for realities that in some ways old terms are, are, would be used for, but those old, old terms are really inapplicable and really misleading. And right off the top of the list is God. So how that's going to come about and what's going to happen is anybody's guess. But we are definitely going to need a whole new language that talks, you know, super consciousness and um, other terms like that um, instead of the old magic and mythic terms that are very, very misleading to um, a whole lot of people um, who see them and think they know what they mean. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it's, it's funny saying that though. I mean, those, those, you know, God everywhere, God nowhere, God coming back. It's, it's a, yeah. it's an odd one. Yeah. We need a new semiotics of spirit. We need a new language that can talk about God. 
including a new word for God, which is typical of the types of older words that have just so much baggage attached to them that they are either useless or terribly misleading. If we look at the history of humanity on the whole, we find three major periods of humanity's relationship to a supreme reality, spirit, or God. For the first 500,000 years, virtually every tribe on the planet believed in a god or spirit of some sort, whether local volcano god, goddess of the local river, or great spirit in general. God was literally everywhere. There simply were no atheistic tribes. This was a period of God is everywhere. Then we hit modernity, and as Nietzsche clearly put it, God is dead. In the modern era, science tended to replace religion in all things ultimately real, and God indeed was dead. So this was the era of God is nowhere. It was a wrenching transition for humanity, going from a time when God was everywhere to a time where God was nowhere. Everything had to be rethought and reworked. Now, if you look at virtually any sophisticated developmental map, you find that virtually all of them have the next higher levels beyond second tier and centaur and turquoise and vision logic. All of them have higher stages that are unmistakably spiritual in nature. But they are given terms like transpersonal, transrational, supramental, superconscious, overmind, supermind, and so on. This is generally called third tier. And with third tier, God is back. God is everywhere. We, humanity, are now on the verge of evolving from that God is nowhere to God is everywhere, third tier. Only this God is profoundly different from the first tier pre-rational mythic literal God where Moses really did part the Red Sea, Lot's life really was turned into a sack of salt, Jesus really was born from a biological virgin, and so on. And the transition will be just as wrenching as the previous one, where we went from God is everywhere to God is nowhere. This will truly be a very difficult period of human evolution, going from God is nowhere to God is everywhere. And we will need an entirely new language to convey this. We need an entirely new semiotics of spirituality. And thus any new religion from the ground up spirituality will have immediate advantage of plugging into this new semiotics that will be evolving and plugging into third tier itself. It will simply have a freshness about it, a newness about it, an up-to-dateness about it that will be profound advantage. And I think it is indeed the direction we are headed in the longer view. In the meantime, I think we will continue to integrate the existing traditions and then extract from them their remaining and glorious wisdom, which will certainly be the shoulders on which the new religions will stand. But all in all, this is a very exciting time and very exciting adventure. And spirituality might finally deliver on its fundamental promise, a radical freedom and ultimate fullness for humans themselves, leading to a time beyond time 
and a space beyond space and a bliss beyond bliss. Fasten your seat belts. It's going to be a bumpy but glorious ride.